what it boils down to is that I've created an organization where we bring humanity back into finance and that the heart and soul actually matters and that it has to be fiscally prudent as well as prudent and in alignment with your heart and your soul and marrying those two places together for a person. And I just really enjoy being the client advocate. And, and I've also, the, the other part of the planning is not everything is done by the financial planner themselves, but I've created different layers of strategic alliances where like we have the normal ones that are the estate planning attorneys and the um, accountants, you know, to do those things for them. But then I have what I call the tweeners, um, which are more like family therapists or uh, nutritionists, things of that nature that are maybe a little outside of the box. And then I have that layer of strategic alliances where I call them my esoteric strategic alliances. And, and it developed to that over time. The, the esoteric ones are ones that help people more on a heart and soul level than more of a logistical financial level. And, um, and depending on how deep a client wants to go that I realized like, wow, you know, financial planning and I would call it life planning. Um, people don't know how to ebb and flow through things. And I have just, you know, I had one woman who came to me and she said, she goes, Julie, I know this is a crazy question, but I know that my, um, uh, I know you might know somebody that um, can give me a referral to this. And she was wanting a surrogate. And I was like, oh, that's really funny. I do have an esoteric strategic alliance that can do surrogacy for you. And it's because I've just built this network to really just help people. Yeah. And that's part of the financial planning process. And that's really my heart and soul. That's what I love to do. I love to just help people to live the life of their dreams. And how do we get them there? And the reason people don't get there is because they feel like they've been pigeonholed into a lifestyle. And then they don't have the freedom to, to shift to like, we stay in jobs that we hate. And, you know, then we get sick and then we die. You know, I use that quote in my most recent book from the Dalai Lama that he's so confused about the Western world because we spend all of our money, all these years uh, at, that we build up ignoring our health. But then at the end of our lives, we use all that money then to pay for all of our healthcare and everything that we need because we ignored the quality of our lives all along the way. And, and for me, I want to continue to keep asking clients and pressing them as to, you know, does your life excite you? Because usually you've become a really good provider, but that job may have served your heart and soul at one point and now it's not. And so how, what do we do about that? How, how does that feel financially? How does that feel? You know, so I go deep with people. I go really deep. 